Dr. Singh, can you give me an example of the 3D cone beam CAT scan imaging technology and how it's used? I actually have a case up on the screen right now. And um, as you can see from this, um, I'll show you, the, I can move this window around. These are images, these are our reformated 3D images. And it allows us to look at any particular section that I choose to and highlight that area. Now, utilizing the various uh, windows, I can look at different areas. As you can see on this particular one, we have a patient's lower arch visible here. And we have planned the placement of a couple of implants in, the, in this area. Notice that the, the pink line represents the nerve chamber or nerve canal. And that is important because we want to know where it is at all times because we have to avoid that during placement of an implant. Okay. Now, we can look at all these versions uh, simultaneously and so we can plan exactly where we would like that implant to be. For example, if I go to that implant and I would like to adjust it I'll just show you how I can adjust it within the bone. I can actually move that implant in or out of the bone. Okay, I can move it up, down, etc. and then get it to the ideal placement. As you can notice from this uh, picture here, we are trying to place the implant where we can avoid the nerve that you see here and center it within the bone. This is actually a good example of where we have something unusual happening. If we were to look at this implant on this image, a two-dimensional image, for example, like here on this upper left, you would not be able to tell that there is actually a narrowing of the bone. When we look at it in this window on the lower right, you can see that the bone narrows significantly here. And if I were to place that implant in that position, I would actually have a part of the implant sitting outside the bone, which of course would may or may not cause a problem, but it certainly wouldn't be the most stable position for the implant. So that information is important and we would not have been able to get that information using only two dimensions. So uh, with that in mind, I would now move my implant until it's well centered within the bone and then angulate it to get the ideal placement for the eventual pr placement of the crown, which goes on top. Okay, So that uh, is what we're seeing here. I have actually also planned uh, some guide sleeves, which are these two um, areas here. These implants are identical, by the way. The, the color coding of the goldish and the uh, greenish color is just so I know exactly which implant I'm looking at when I look at the scans. Okay? Um, but the guide sleeves are something that are, are sitting on top of there in the software only and this will form part of our surgical guide. So essentially we would take this uh, information that we've used to place that implant, send it off to a company or we'll be able to do it fairly soon within the office. Essentially uh, make, a make a surgical guide, export this image, send it to a CAD CAM milling chamber within the office. Within an hour we'll be able to have a surgical guide ready and essentially place that implant into identically this position with only the, that four millimeter circle of gum tissue being removed. So here is this the information that we had in the 3D scan was then exported to another machine that makes us a surgical guide, which is this piece. Um, I'm showing it to you on a model so that you can see how it fits. Um, these two rings were the two rings that were evident, the green and gold rings, that direct the placement of the implant. So essentially, when we go in into the mouth, you can see that this fits very snugly, and allows us to go directly into that position controlling the angulation as well as the depth of the placement of that implant. It allows us to place that implant very very precisely 
first implant, second implant in that location, and allows that implant to be almost identical position as where we planned it. So here we have a model and what we're showing are a couple of implants, the gray objects, which we would never see, would be embedded in bone. So these are a couple of implants and connected to them are the gold units, actually a couple of abutments or, or attachments, and those attachments are used to support a denture. When that's placed, this denture is a lot more stable than it otherwise would be. So essentially, uh, we're using a couple of implants, relatively cost-effective solution to support an entire arch and allowing the patient uh, to have a solution that's much, much better than without the implants.